So with that said, it's a real distinct pleasure to now um, introduce the next panel, which is the uh, regulatory um, landscape in India. We had a, a great presentation last year um, where we heard about some of the reforms that were occurring in India. Um, I think we have a really committed group of senior um, global biopharmaceutical leaders who want to see us ramp up our ability to drive access to patients in India. And I couldn't imagine a better um, moderator. And Muna, I'll hand it over to you. You can introduce yourself and the panel, and please take it away. Thank you, Andy. And we're delighted to kick off this next discussion by welcoming Dr. Mandeep Bandari, who's the Joint Secretary, Ministry of Health and the Government of India. And I also would like to welcome the Drugs Controller General of India, Dr. Samani. Uh, and uh, we're just delighted to have you both here for us uh, for this discussion. India's determination to bolster the country's preparedness to address healthcare priorities is evident not only from the announcement of the self-reliant India package, but also from the steps being taken to drive the regulatory reforms and enhance the ease of doing business for our industry. Dr. Samani and Dr. Bandari will share their perspectives on these reforms, including the conduct of clinical trials in India and the efforts to ensure the uh, high degree of safety and timeliness of access of treatments for patients. So Dr. Samani, perhaps we can start with you. At last year's conference, we heard a bit about the reforms underway designed to strengthen the clinical trials environment as well as address the pain points that are being experienced by, um, by the sponsors. Can you speak to the progress that has been made and what we can expect in the coming year? Thank you, Mona, for this wonderful opportunity. The most important thing what the innovators and the sponsor wants that the great sense of partnership, transparency, predictability, and the timelines to be followed. And on all these fronts and easily understandable regulation which are digitally available so that they can interact online with the regulators. And all this front, the regulations have been modified. The regulations have come in picture from March 2019. And thereafter, the pre-submission meeting, the timelines for the newly discovered drugs within to give the clinical trial protocol approvals within 30 days and also fast track approval, pre-submission meeting and post-submission meeting. Experience has been very encouraging and we have, we have done that. And at times when the drugs are of a, or the therapeutic options are such that which will address the unmet need or serious life-threatening diseases and there is no probability of a difference in safety and efficacy parameters or in such cases the waiver of local clinical trial is also enabled and many such drugs have been approved in India and sponsors and various innovators are finding it very useful this waiver online operation pre-submission meeting they are finding it quite useful so these are some of the enabling environment which are taken from the regulatory perspective. Dr. Bandari, would you care to add your perspective as well around how you see the ecosystem continuing to shape up to support the early stage trials as well? I think Dr. Bandari could not join. He was finding some trouble joining with the link. Perhaps then we can continue and, and hopefully he will be able to call in. Yes. And so Dr. Sani, we all have seen a significant amount of steps being taken by regulatory agencies around the world to enable the COVID-19 related trials, as well as approve the therapeutics for emergency use authorization. Can you speak to the actions that you have authorized in India? The COVID 
has brought a definitive challenges when it came diagnostic options therapeutic options were very limited we never knew how this virus is and on the 19th march you will not believe that there was not a single kit which can detect this neither antigen nor antibody or nor rt pcr thereafter india has taken this task and indigenously developed more than 70 operators who who are having the rt pcr antigen clia and various kinds of kits available in india and 250 operators more than 250 operators who are importer also most of them are from us also they have been given approval with regards to and they are all on the emergency basis we had to work day and night to see the performance evaluation and testing with regards to therapeutic options uh, therapeutic options we were you know as many operators have come with the trial proposal starting from the gene therapy product to small molecules to biologicals vaccines plasma and also various various kinds of other other options we have worked hand in hand with them we have started a special meetings and those special meetings were being held every day of the subject expert committees and the FDA, I means CDSU over here, was working to review all these trial applications and the emergency use authorization applications also. And in this regard, I would like to tell you, we, we never, because the response during pandemic is different than what is the response during the peace time. The public, the doctors, and the overall society is ready to accept the rapid response or sometimes accept you know more risk in comparison to what they can accept during the peace time so based on that and uh, also based on the experience of uh, various operators various companies or various partners in the usa we we also dependent on depended on what has been approved in US. So one example I would give you, the remdesivir. That was approved under emergency use authorization. And the Gilead has given voluntary license to four or five manufacturers over here, six manufacturers. And those manufacturers were audited, their products were tested, entire compar comparability were tested, their stability was ensured, and now Today you will see there are five manufacturers manufacturing remdesivir in India after due approval by the DCGI under the emergency use authorization. We have put some additional conditions also like having the informed consent and all that. Similarly, the drugs which can, which can also stop the cytokine storm, which is available in, the, in our country for a long time one, the itolizumab, that, that has also undergone the clinical trial in India, randomized controlled clinical trial, and it was also given an emergency use authorization for this added level, uh, level indication. And thirdly, the favipiravir. You wanted to say something? Please, please continue. The favipiravir, that this... This therapeutic option was also tried, uh, a randomized control trial was conducted in India. And after getting the reasonable results, which are, that was also given the emergency use authorization. And now there are more than 170 products which are under trial. Of course, which includes various vaccines also and uh, of course, for that, the emergency use authorization is not presently in the considerations. They are going through the phase two and the phase three uh, trials in India. They have reached to that level. And we, we are quite sure that they will be coming soon. 
So thank you for that update. And I see that perhaps Dr. Bandari has been able to join us. Dr. Bandari, are you on? Yeah, very good evening. Sorry for getting things slightly wrong in terms of technology and all those things. But uh, finally, I've been able to join. Thank you. And welcome. So just to pick up on the conversation that we were having, can, can you speak to the fact that the, that, that the government of India has set up an expert committee to guide the financing distribution and the administration of, of the COVID-related vaccines? What role do you see the industry being able to play in partnership in this area? Well, uh, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity on behalf of Government of India. As uh, Dr. Somani, who's a drug controller general of India, he would have briefed. We are very seriously looking at a lot of handholding and support for the COVID-related, uh, both vaccines, and the pharmaceuticals, and other products for which uh, the clinical trial rules which uh, Government of India brought into place last year it sets up a whole ecosystem for clinical trials in the country. We're looking big time uh, for the players, for the industry to be coming to the country for doing the clinical trials for which we are more than eager to provide them with all kinds of support. Uh, as such, the clinical trial rules and regulations, they provide a lot of uh, support to the industry, to the new players, for the innovators, for uh, uh, the new launches of the drugs to come over to do the clinical trials here. And uh, in terms of uh, the systems, the availability of the time-bound disposal of the processes, which enable the industry, as also in terms of the infrastructure, the hand-holding, which uh, the drug controller and his team would do, that is something which we have built into our regulations. And I'm very sure that the industry would take uh, note of this, and in these trying times, uh, we have a lot of support from here. Thank you. And I, and I think it is on that note of optimism and support and a sense of the partnership uh, that I uh, feel that uh, we now need to conclude uh, the panel discussion. It was a short one, but a terrific one. And I, and I want to just take a moment to recognize the partnership that we have as an industry with the government of India to continue to deliver the innovations to the patients well, that we serve. The, uh, the country truly has the potential of becoming a leading destination for investment in R&D as well as in manufacturing with policies that are aligned to global standards. So thank you again to Dr. Bandari, to Dr. Samani for joining us for this timely discussion.